learners welcome to this session you know we have discussed the definition of human trafficking the causes of human trafficking the types of human trafficking dimensions of human rights various legislations in india then international conventions and protocol and covenants related to human rights and human trafficking and now we will discuss the process so today the topic is data on human trafficking or data on human trafficking this is very important you know that you have to have some data otherwise if you do not have the data how will you address the issues related to human trafficking but do you think that i carry a label that i am a trafficker or i am a victim of trafficking or you carry a label of a victim of trafficking so it is very difficult to see and understand that this person is a trafficker and this person is a victim so can we convict a victim thinking that he is a he has committed an offense or he is a culprit can we accuse a victim just because he has been rescued from a place where illegal activities were going on so now we will discuss all these issues of data in this session when we talk about crisis or a problem we tend to ask how big is the problem or what is the magnitude this is important because our response to the challenges posed by the crisis depends on our knowledge about the scale and magnitude of the situation since human trafficking is both a transnational and national character it is important to make ourselves aware about the scale at the global and national level due to the very clandestine nature of the entire process of human trafficking it becomes very difficult to accurately assess the magnitude and scale of trafficking you know you cannot work on x and y theory because x and y are not available with you 2 plus 2 is 4 but you don't have 2 plus 2 da data so how will you add how will you think about addressing the issues trafficking in human beings especially women and children is a global phenomena and no country is untouched by this the reason of this knowledge crisis is largely due to secretive nature of the crime of human trafficking and under reporting of the offenses there are other reasons as well like vulnerability factors not being addressed or being thought about at a global level for instance the human trafficking takes different forms while what is recognized and reported most is sexual exploitation of women followed by forced labor other forms of human trafficking like organ transplantation marriage beggary pornography online crimes are overlooked or don't gain that much of attention our understanding of human trafficking is piecemeal and often based of on accidental information our understanding is also complicated by the global reach of trafficking and by social and cultural variation in the ways that the crime of trafficking unfolds the term trafficking in persons can be misleading for many it places emphasis on the transaction aspect of a crime that is more accurately described as enslavement exploitation of people day after day but we do not have a global recognized definition of human trafficking which all state parties follow in true sense we have different legislations at the national level addressing few 
forms of trafficking as crime under the national legislation and many a times the other types of crimes related to human trafficking are not even reported. Compared to other criminal activities, it is especially difficult to get a clear picture of human trafficking. In part, this is because the victims of trafficking are more likely to be hidden or unreasonable. This invisibility has an impact on our understanding of the demand for trafficked person as well. The extent of human trafficking can be further explained by a turnover due to this trait specially related to commercial sexual exploitation. This has increased by leaps and bonds in recent years. No country in this world is an exception. Some country have become the source of human trafficking. Some country have become the destination areas of human trafficking and some are transit areas. In Asia, Europe, America, there has definitely been a rise in number of trafficking cases. UNODC report on human trafficking exposes modern form of slavery. This report of 2009 says that based on data gathered from 155 countries, it offers the first global assessment of the scope of human trafficking and what is being done to fight it. It includes an overview of trafficking patterns, legal steps taken in response and country specific information on reported cases of trafficking in persons, victims and prosecution. So I have taken the entire content from the report only and this was the first time when we thought about having a data. At the launch of this report in New York, the executive director of UNODC, Antonio Maria Costa said that many governments are still in denial. So you don't accept that you have trafficking cases in your country. There is even neglect when it comes to either reporting on or prosecuting cases of human trafficking. He pointed to the fact that while the number of convictions for human trafficking is increasing, two out of every five countries covered by the UNODC report had not recorded a single conviction. So this shows that we lack data collection. According to the report, the most common form of human trafficking, 79% is for sexual exploitation. The victims of sexual exploitation are predominantly women and girls. Surprisingly, in 30% of the countries which provided information on gender of traffics, women make up the largest proportion of traffickers. In some parts of the world, women trafficking women is a norm. So, you know, you don't have male traffickers, you have women traffickers. The second most common form of human trafficking is forced labor, 18%. Although this may be a misrepresentation because forced labor is less frequently detected and reported than trafficking for sexual exploitation. And even sexual exploitation is not many times reported because, you know, we have prostitution. The legality of the prostitution is another question. But still people do not report in cases of prostitution, in cases of child abuse, in cases of male order brides, in cases of sex tourism, etc. Worldwide, almost 20% of all trafficking victims are children. However, in some parts of Africa and the Mekong region, children are the majority up to 100% in parts of West Africa. Although trafficking seems to imply people moving across continents, most exploitation takes place close to home. Data shows intra-regional and domestic trafficking are the major forms of trafficking in persons. And you know, we have child abusers, we have cases of trafficking, wherein you know you, your relative, your family members are selling and purchasing you. The report shows that in the past few years, the number of member states seriously implementing the protocol has more than doubled. 
However, there are still many countries that lack the necessary legal instruments or political will to address the issue of human trafficking. This report increases our understanding of more modern slave markets, yet it also exposes our ignorance, said Mr. Costa. He said we have a big picture, but it is impressionistic and lacks depth. We fear the problem is getting worse, but we cannot prove it for lack of data. And many governments are obstructing, he admitted. The head of UNODC therefore called to, on governments and social scientists to improve information gathering and sharing on human trafficking. If we do not overcome this knowledge crisis, we will be fighting the problem blindfolded, he warned. This is 2009. 2020 in the pay, same situation can be seen you know where the crimes are not reported where the laws are not implemented properly and people are abused because of their vulnerability in a panel discussion on exposing denial and Benigan neglect Mr. Costa called on governments the private sector and the public at large to step up and fight against trafficking in persons. More must be done to reduce the vulnerability of victims, increase the risk of two traffickers, and lower demands for the goods and services of modern day slaves, he said. You know, how was this report made? This report took the data of the following countries. Middle East and North Africa, West and Central Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, North America, Central America and Caribbean, South America, East Asia and the Pacific, South and Southwest Asia, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, Western and Central Europe. And he further says, after much neglect and indifference, the world is waking up to the reality of a modern form of slavery. The public and the media are becoming aware that humans prey upon humans for money. Parliaments are passing appropriate severe laws. The judiciary is facing its anti-slavery responsibility with more prosecutions and convictions. Civil society and the private sectors are mobilizing goodwill and resources to assist victims. Hearing this wake-up call, politicians as well as ordinary people ask me two sets of questions. First, they want to know how big the crime of human trafficking really is, how many victims are there. So at the international level, even people are not aware of the data. Who are the traffickers? What are their roots and their gains? What are the trends, namely, is the problem getting even more severe? Why and where? Second, he said, people want to know what to do individually and collectively. And so we have this course on understanding human trafficking. Why aren't government and the United Nations? Why aren't we all doing more? Some people are even willing to mobilize personal resources to fight this crime, but for whom and how? This needs a proper training, orientation and understanding of human trafficking. The first set of questions needs to be answered as a matter of priority. Only by understanding the depth, breadth and scope of the problem can we address the second issue, namely how to counter it. You don't know the sickness how will you address that sickness so far we have not attained much knowledge and therefore initiatives have been inadequate and disjointed policy can be effective if it is evidence-based and so far the evidence has been scanty first over the past few years the number of countries that have taken steps to implement the foremost International agreement in this area, the UN protocol against persons in trafficking, especially women and children, has doubled. However, there are still many countries, particularly in Africa, that lack the necessary legal instruments. Second, the number of convictions is increasing, but not proportionately to the growing awareness and probably the size of the population and the size of the problem. 
most convictions still take place in only a few countries. While these countries may have human rights trafficking problems more serious than others, they are doing something about them. On the other hand, as of 2007, eight, two out of every five countries covered by this report had not recorded a single conviction. Either they are blind to the problem or they are ill-equipped to deal with it. I urge governments and the stakeholders to call on UNODC expertise, including the recent published toolkit to combat human trafficking in persons, to show that commitment. It is very important statement made in regard to the data and the awareness about human trafficking and the prosecution and conviction rate in the countries of crimes of human trafficking. Third, sexual exploitation is by far the most common identified form of human trafficking, 79%, followed by forced labor, 18%. This may be the result of statistical bias. By and large, the exploitation of women tends to be visible in city centers or along highways because it is more frequently reported sexual exploitation has become the most documented type of trafficking in aggregate statistics. And in India, this also, you know, is not very much true because we don't have data even for sex trafficking. In comparison, other forms of exploitation are underreported, forced or bonded labor, domestic servitude and forced marriage, organ removal and the exploitation of children in begging, sex trade and warfare, a very important point to make. How will you create a data when that is not even reported or noticed by the agencies? Fourth, a disproportionate number of women are involved in human trafficking, not only as victims, but also as traffickers. Female offenders have a more prominent role in present-day slavery than in most of the forms of crime. This fact needs to be addressed, especially the cases where former victims have become perpetrators. A very important case to be made out that you have to be very careful even with a woman. Fifthly, trafficking in national and is national and global. Nationality of the trafficker and victim is same. So there are cases where we find that the nationality of the trafficker and victim is same. He is from your region. He understands the local situation and exploits to his advantage. There are cases of long distance trafficking. Source is at one country and destination is far off. So we also have these cases and it further says that the gender, citizenship and forms of victimization have been studied in this report. The data gathered on the gender of offenders in 46 countries suggests that women play a key role as perpetrator of human trafficking. Based on the data collected for this report, most of offenders were citizens of the country where they were arrested. This suggests that local criminal network acquire the victims and sells them to criminal networks based in destination countries. This stands to reason since many source countries are relatively poor with small foreign populations. Offenders often endeavor to win the trust of the victims and use their local connections to threaten retaliation against family members if victims resist. Local people are better situated to acquire and control the victims. However, in cases where the arrest took place in a high income destination country, the offender were more likely to be foreign than when the arrest took place in the source country. In many instances, diaspora population from source regions may be used as a conduit for removing victims into the countries where they will be exploited. This phenomena also is seen in other forms of transnational trafficking. In the 61 countries where the gender and age of the victims were specified, two-thirds of the identified victims were women and 13% were girls. So you can see the profile of victims as per the report. In the 52 countries where the form of exploitation was specified, 79% of the victims were subjected to sexual exploitation. While it remains likely that labor exploitation and male victims are relatively underdetected. 
the over representation of sexual exploited women in true across region even in countries where other forms of trafficking are routinely detected human trafficking flow you know the report tried to study the human trafficking flow in most of the reported cases victims were moved across international borders domestic trafficking or exploitation of citizens in their home country was reported by 32 countries but is likely under detected due to restrictive definitions of human trafficking or a greater visibility of foreign victims even in countries reporting domestic trafficking foreign victims were almost always in numerous cross border flows are not necessarily long distance flows much of the cross border trafficking act activity was between countries of the same general region particularly between neighboring countries but there were also evidence of intercontinental trafficking most remarkably victims from east asia were detected in more than 20 countries and regions throughout the world including europe america middle east central asia and africa this suggests that the trafficking of east asians is a bit of a phenomena in itself and worthy of detailed study. Other long distance flows include the trafficking of African victims to locations in Europe and North America, the trafficking of Latin American victims to North America and Europe, the trafficking of Central European, Eastern European and Central Asian victims to Europe and the Middle East and the trafficking of South Asian victims to the Middle East. There is a need for continuous monitoring Looking at the data received, there is a clear need for an international standardization of definition along with the lines suggested by the protocol. Too often, even similar situated countries with compatible legal system are counting different things. There is also a need to encourage member states to collect more and better information on the state, so on the state of human trafficking in their country. Some countries could cite the number of victims or offenders, for example, but had no data on the gender, age, or citizenship of these people. Domestic crimes that are tantamount to the trafficking are not being tallied in nationals total. A very important point, you know. There is also a limitation of the data. For most part, the information used to compile this report was collected by national institutions, mostly for their own administrative purposes. The data were thus not originally compiled for the purposes of this research. So how will you have a comprehensive data when you know country which takes the data there it is not a crime. The second limitation relates to the availability of criminal justice system to detect criminal activities for various reasons not all crimes committed are discovered. So the dark numbers of undetected crimes people even don't report the crimes. Thirdly, the level of efficiency of existing systems that record human trafficking cases has a clear impact on statistics provided in this report. The volume of victims and offenders officially recorded can be heavily influenced by the performance of the recording mechanism. A very too true statement to be made in a report. Finally, a margin of uncertainty exists relating to information presented for a limited number of countries where different authoritative sources, police, public prosecutor provide different figures for the same indicator. In some of these cases, decision had to be made by UNODC in which of these sources should be used. So, two authorities giving different data on the same aspect. So which one should you, you know, take and which one should you reject? So there is a difficulty. So in the end, I would just like to say that, you know, we have seen this, that data is a very important aspect to handle the case, to have a law, to create awareness, to address the issues, to see the implementation, and these are the practical problems. You do not carry a tag of a trafficker or a person who is a victim of trafficking. So it is very difficult to understand how many people in actual have been trafficked in a local area at a border 
then you know we have different legislations in different countries addressing the issues of human trafficking some consider a particular form of human trafficking as another crime some consider as a part of human trafficking so how will you get the data if you are talking in terms of human trafficking mostly the crimes are not reported mostly the people who have been trafficked are not able to access justice even they are not able to run and you know leave the place of captivity so there are a lot of issue issues related to getting the data and addressing the vulnerabilities but we should have a comprehensive plan to address the vulnerability in every country and then we will be able to address the issues of human trafficking globally and nationally and will have better statistics to take a call on thank you all for the session have a nice day stay blessed <music>